television and he and his officials around him could be seen looking up rather startled and then a few seconds later dozens of soldiers were scattering across the parade ground uh, and then the transmission was cut off here's the moment Well, the communications minister has said that those drones were flown towards the parade uh, and then exploded, injuring seven soldiers. President Maduro, though, has also been speaking since this. Um, he accused the right-wing domestic enemies and also Colombia of being responsible. There has been an attempt to assassinate me. I have no doubt that this all points to the extreme right in Venezuela in alliance with the right in Colombia, and that Juan Miguel Santos is behind this attempt. I have no doubt. President Maduro also then went on to say that several perpetrators were caught, uh, though he didn't collaborate further. I have to report that some of those behind this attempt on my life have been captured and are being processed. Some evidence has been seized. It's a fairly unclear picture, um, but Otto Reich, the former US ambassador to Venezuela, has said he wouldn't be surprised if what's been described as an attack was actually a stunt organized by the Maduro government. I would not put it past the Maduro government to have organized something like this in order to justify a crackdown against the remaining opposition in Venezuela. And I've seen things on the internet already tonight about the opposition in Venezuela speculating that the government may very well have done this. Uh, it's not unusual among the dictatorships and authoritarian governments to organize a self coup well, before that comment from Otto Reich, the former U.S. ambassador to Venezuela, we spoke to the BBC South America correspondent Katie Watson for the details she had on what the President Maduro had to say. Well, Mr. Maduro has come out saying that he's alive and he's more ready than ever to continue the revolution in Venezuela. He said it was an attack to kill him. They tried to assassinate him. And he blames neighboring Colombia and unnamed financiers in the United States. Some of the members of his government blamed Venezuela's opposition. I mean, this isn't something that's uh, uncommon. It's something that we hear from the Maduro administration quite uh, a lot. But yes, it was quite dramatic seeing Mr. Maduro up on stage, him and his wife looking up quite concerned, and then suddenly this audio just going. I mean, this was rolling on state TV, and state TV is pretty much the only thing on television in Venezuela. So, you know, it would have been seen across the Venezuela live. Well, and also the concern would be this is an army parade. Uh, you've got the president there in full uniform. So Surrounded by bodyguards, security would have been tight, but this is embarrassing, isn't it, that a drone attack of this nature was able to get through? Indeed, it's another twist in the surreal life of Caracas of Venezuela. Only last year we heard uh, about a, a helicopter attack on the Supreme Court and conspiracy theories banned, and no doubt this is exactly what's going to happen here. And already some agencies are talking about the fact that maybe it might have been a, a gas explosion and an official word from the government might not be 100% true. I mean, this is the difficult thing about Venezuela. It's very hard to operate as a journalist. It's very hard to get the real story from anybody. And so, you know, we hear it from the government. It will make, uh, will make him look vulnerable, but it will also give him the opportunity to crack down on political opponents in the name of security. That's one of the concerns that could come out from this. But um, nevertheless, it's a, it's a bizarre story and one that I think everybody in, in Venezuela is concerned about for whatever reason. You talk about the conspiracy theories there and the sort of fog of trying to get to the truth. Nevertheless, though, he has got reason to believe that people may be trying to assassinate him, hasn't he? Well, we saw the helicopter attack in the Supreme Court uh, last year and he called it a terrorist attack. I mean, he talks about uh, the EU and the US you know, meddling in Venezuelan affairs. You had Trump make a comment a while ago about possible military intervention. I mean, all of these things certainly you know, bring up the tension in this region. Mr. Maduro is a political player that you know, nobody really, I guess, understands uh, and his motivations. And that's something that you know, does concern the, the wide population. But yes, I mean, he's a man that's in power for six years, won the elections that were very disputed and opposition would love to see him go. I mean, a lot of other governments across the world would also like him to stand out. So, I mean, he's not a popular man in this region or globally. So he thinks he perhaps you know, has reason for people to want to see him go, but he may remain president saying, you know, he's more determined than ever to keep this revolution going. The BBC South America correspondent Katie Watson speaking to us earlier. Emma Bullimore and Brian Fast still with us. Um, Brian, let's uh, take up this accusation of from President Maduro himself. He's pointing the finger at right-wing domestic enemies, but also Colombia, which of course has very close ties to the USA. Um, so far, all we've had to, from the USA is this comment from a former US ambassador to Venezuela, Otto Wright, uh, putting some skepticism and saying that it could be a stunt. Uh, this all sounds quite pricey language, doesn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I think there are some questions about what actually happened because it's a, a recent news story and it underlines the value of having a free press, which Venezuela does not. Because uh, you know, when a state says something, there's not really a way to determine whether it's true or not. And, and that's why I think this is one of those global moments of, of, of sort of the defense of truth and the defense of free press is so so important. But it is true that when uh, you know authoritarian leaders control the press, they are able to sometimes use events that are seemingly you know, shown against their power to crack down opponents to by the opposition and then consolidate power under the state emergency. We'll see whether that happens. But I think it's also important to note that Maduro is. Uh, I study authoritarian leaders, and I study Trump uh, very closely. He's the only authoritarian leader that Trump has criticized. So Trump has praised Rodrigo Duterte of the Philippines, Putin, President Xi of China. He's praised Erdogan in Turkey. He's criticized Maduro, uh, and it's because he's a left-wing authoritarian populist rather than right-wing. But that being said, you know, Venezuela is currently a financial basket case. It has regional implications that they're accusing Colombia of being behind this, and this could be a, a foreign policy challenge that Trump has a real crisis 